the producers and distributors of Tech AV technical training aids welcome you to another module in the series Basic Hydraulic Systems Maintenance. In this two-part module, we shall be first discussing how to deal with system faults. In part two of the module, we shall learn how to read a simple or basic circuit diagram. Your ability to attend to basic faults and to interpret the details on circuit diagrams will be of great benefit to you as an operator of equipment or as a service person involved in plant maintenance. Your understanding of basic operating principles is essential for this program. Please do not proceed with this module without having first successfully completed module number one of this series. Part one deals with system faults. Hydraulic power systems do not present many problems. If the oil is kept at the correct level, filters cleaned or replaced when specified, and the tank kept clean, then the system will generally provide years of trouble-free service. When a fault does show up in a system, you will not, at this stage, be expected to repair anything, but you will be expected to provide an accurate and intelligent report to a supervisor. The first step is simply to observe the problem. You should be able to describe the symptom in terms of how the system is operating, that is to say, behaving. Step two is known as normalizing the system. This step must always be done whenever a problem involves a loss of power or speed in the actuators. Normalizing means checking and making sure that all obvious factors are normal. This begins with the oil level, and oil temperature. Where applicable, top up the oil level and make a note of the temperature if it appears excessively high. Next we must check, where fitted, any clogging indicators for flagging, the term used to say that an indicator is giving a warning. Renew any clogged filter as described in Module 2 of this series. Check the tank breather, and if it looks dirty inside, renew it as a matter of course. Next check, and if necessary, secure any loose connection on the pump suction line. A loose connection at any one of these connections is a common cause of pump and delivery related problems. If the problem on your system involves a noisy pump, and a lack of power and speed in the actuators, then you should inspect the suction strainer and clean or replace it as described in Module 2 of this series. The working line connections should be checked for leaks and secured if necessary. Once you have made the necessary normalizing checks and effected any corrections, and the system is still displaying a fault, then you must move to step three. That is, you must check the major system components. Most industrial systems feature a system pressure gauge. This is a valuable aid in diagnosing problems. For example, on our demonstration model, if we hold the control valve in, after the ram has reached the end of its stroke, the gauge needle will shoot up rapidly. The pressure relief valve will also be heard as it dumps the full flow of oil from the pump back into the return line. The pressure gauge reading at this time is reflecting the relief valve's setting. If the gauge rises slowly and remains at a low reading when the control valve is held, then we have a delivery or flow problem. This is not necessarily a pump problem but more likely to be a suction line problem. Low pressure combined with excessive pump noise is a point you must note. As a rule, most hydraulic pumps, especially gear types, make a steady whining noise. If the noise of the pump increases when the load is being moved, then the cause could be cavitation. This is a situation where the pump is starving of oil. 
report this condition if it persists after normalizing has been carried out. High temperatures in any of the major components indicates a friction-related problem that, in turn, indicates wear in the internal components. With your hand, carefully touch the casings of the pump, the pressure relief valve, the direction control valve, and the actuator. If any component proves to be excessively hot, then make a note of this on your report. Let us summarize the procedure for dealing with faults. First, we observe the problem in order to describe the symptoms accurately. Next, we perform all the normalizing checks to ensure that we do not overlook obvious faults. If normalizing does not solve a problem, then we check the major components and system operation by first observing and noting the behavior of the system pressure gauge, secondly, listening for excessive or unusual noises in the pump, and finally, feeling each major component for excessive temperature. Having completed your inspection, you should next report your findings to your supervisor so that the necessary arrangements can be made for repairs to be carried out. After the break, we shall look at circuit diagrams.